The victims had not belonged to opposition groups or been politically active. Their elimination was tied to a different form of subversion. The killings of Mokhtari and Puyande were particularly symbolic. They were strangled, as if to say that freedom of expression would now become the main target of state terror campaign. Their offense apparently had been to have become involved along with 131 other authors in working for the establishment of an independent writers association. Their action epitomized the new form of subversion that was slowly developing in the Islamic Republic. Human rights were its ideology and NGOs were its organs. Not long after the writers and intellectuals were killed, Students moved to take up their cause, claiming autonomy from Islamist politicization and creating numerous human rights organizations. In 1999, and again a decade later, students became victims of official violence as police and other regime forces assaulted universities' dormitories, administering beating, destroying belongings, and even killing people. Women who organized to fight gender discrimination were greeted by police harassment, arbitrary arrest, prison terms, and floggings. Minorities have formed peaceful human rights organization groups only to see their leaders given long stretches in jail or even death sentences following upon false accusations of terrorism. Teachers and workers who tried to organize independent unions faced similar harsh punishment. Lawyers who have organized to defend the rights of the accused are arrested, condemned to lengthy prison terms, barred from practice, or forced to exile. Since the disputed presidential elections of June 2009, after which hundreds of thousands of people demonstrated to demand their rights to free elections, Repression has intensified. As happened in 1981, dozens of peaceful demonstrators were extrajudicially killed in a recurrent pattern of state violence that has been witnessed time and again during the last 20 years. Hundreds of journalists, political activists, and human rights defenders have been forced into exile. Rape and coerced confessions have been used to remind a new generation that the state claims total dominion over both the bodies and minds of its citizens. The mass killing of 1988 seemed at first glance to be just another episode in the history of state violence in Iran. Yet, when put into historical perspective, they came into focus as both the fulfillment of many prior warning signs that the world failed to heed, and the herald of later episode of state violence that in turn may hold the danger of still more such violence to come. Allow me to mention two recent incidents, each of which is a sobering rem reminder that what happened in 1988 is still happening in different forms today, and that holding the perpetrators of the 1988 prison massacres accountable for their crimes may be not only a demand of justice, but also the best means to prevent more such atrocities in the future. On January 28, 2010, Arash Rahmanipur was executed. He was 19 years old. Arash was accused of fomenting unrest after the 2009 elections, and yet Arash had been in prison since before the voting took place. In the summer of 2010, rumors of dozens of detainees, that dozens of detainees have been secretly executed in Mashhad prison spread around the world. The government never acknowledged these executions and the man who reported them is in prison. Salman was arrested during the July 2009 peaceful demonstrations. Here is his account of what happened to him in Kahrizak detention centers. When we entered, 
they sat us on the ground. A second lieutenant gave a speech. He told us, this place is called Kahrizak. Kahrizak means the end of the world. Here, bestiality will soon become for you a second nature. We were all naked. They forced us to throw our clothes in a garbage bin. After keeping us naked for 30 minutes in the courtyard, they started beating us. The third or fourth day, around noon, they took us to the courtyard. They made half of us crawl on our hands and knees around the courtyard while carrying the other prisoners on our back. We had to carry them in a circle around the courtyard. The ground was hot. We were burning. After five minutes, all I could see was blood on the ground from other people's knees and hands. I carried an old man on my back. We circled the courtyard maybe 20 or 25 times. If we, saw, we stopped, they beat, up, beat us. 30 years earlier, in August 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini had decreed that dissidents were ferocious beasts. Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, in politics, words are not mere figures of speech. Thank you.